You don't really know much about Halloween. Welcome to another unboxing. Uh, this is the unboxing for the Vinegar Syndrome subscriber sale where I went a little bit haywire um, because I subscribed and then also they had a bunch of sales and it's once a year so you do your best. Uh, anyway, not all of these are blind buys. Um, a lot of them are but uh, of course as you if you're familiar with my videos I do my research to try and get as much information to pass on a little history or a little uh, personal info about them, so there's a little bit more to it than just showing you pictures of boxes. So uh, the first movie that we picked up was the Amityville Horror 4K. Um, this one is from 1979, directed by Stuart Rosenberg. Uh, it's the classic haunted house story. Um, it used to scare the heck out of me when I was younger, but uh, since I found out that uh, it was all just a bunch of bunk, Anything else, Amityville, there was even a documentary that I, I avoided just because I didn't, didn't care anymore after finding out that it was all faked. But this film is still kind of a classic in the genre. I couldn't resist uh, picking it up because it should be a part of, of any horror film uh, fan's collection. If you don't know the story of it, then I'm surprised you're watching this video. You've probably seen this movie seven or eight times. Um, the next one in the box is a Category 3 film called Ebola Syndrome that uh, stars Anthony Wong excuse me, who I'm a fan of his work, and he's probably the primary reason I, I bought this. Uh, he is a, a pretty well-known actor in the Category 3 genre. Uh, this one is also a 4K release, um, which is kind of terrifying to think about because this, if you're not familiar with Category 3, it means that it's kind of extreme horror. Um, I don't really dig on, on a lot of gore, but I like exploitation, and I like things that are a little left to center. Um, so... I've just heard so much about it. It's kind of such a, a notorious film that I figure I should have it and take a look at it because I've never seen it. Um, basically, a Chinese restaurant worker is wanted for murder. He contracts uh, Ebola in South Africa, becomes immune to it, and then unknowingly spreads it from there and uh, continues to infect people with it once he's back home. Sounds like a party. Um, but uh, I'm curious, and we'll see how that goes. Next up, we have Black Cat 1 and 2. This one was released during the sale, um, and since I'm a subscriber, I got a, a huge discount on it. It's from 1991 and 1992. Uh, for those of you who know me, love, know that I love uh, movies with women in power uh, and women that have guns, you know, our action heroines. And uh, this one is looks like it's just kind of crazy, kind of like the femme Nikita a little bit. Um, it's directed by Stephen Shin, who did both of the films. It also comes with this handy dandy little uh, booklet that gives you s information about the film as well as, as, as well as pictures and whatnot. So if you like to do a little reading with your film, um, then there you go. I mean, this, this looks like it's right up my alley. The trailer is a uh, suitably fun and big bang shooty shooty. Um, like I said, it's basically the, the, uh, story for La Femme Nikita. So if you're familiar with that, you'll kind of know what to expect from this. Um, but it's since there's two movies and it's kind of a long thing, we'll skip that part. Um, next up, we have The Werewolf versus The Vampire Woman. Now, I am not real familiar with Paul Nashi's work. Um, I know a lot about Paul Nashi and I like uh, what I've heard. Um, m my recent find at the Cobwebs Channel, Channel Daniel, uh, is recently dug into the Paul Nashi archives as another 4K. And um, he said this is probably the best of the bunch as far as releases, both quality and quantity. On the, uh, the film, this was directed by uh, Leon Kamofsky. Uh, it's the third released film in which uh, Paul plays uh, Valdemir Doneski, who is the, the, the werewolf in the film. Uh, it kind of became his favorite character and kind of what he was known for. Um, and 
basically it's about two girls who are traveling in the French countryside and they uh, are looking for a lost grave and then they run into uh, Valdemir and things go interesting from there. So I'm excited to start my Palmashi journey. Next up we have some 90s cheese here. We've got Talons of the Eagle uh, starring Billy Blanks and Jaleel Merhai. If you are familiar with uh, either one of them, then you probably know that they were staples of the 90s direct-to-video action films that you would have seen in your local blockbuster and mom-and-pop video stores. A lot of times they were with Cynthia Rothrock or right next to Cynthia Rothrock. Um, I mean, you don't really know too, need to know too much about this other than they're two great tastes that taste great together. Uh, and, I, you know, it's it looks like uh, this one. Let's see. Three DA8... DA, DEA agents are killed by Mr. Lee, a martial arts champion, um, is then sent on assignment to Toronto to do stuff and things happen. People get shot and kicked and stabbed and jumped and all that kind of stuff. Um, next we have The Laughing Dead, which i got to cover that up because there's a little bit of... Um, this one is from 1989, directed by Sum Tao. Uh, I don't want to butcher the last name. Sure. Cool. That's pretty close. Um, this is a, a weird one from the 80s that uh, has kind of become, oh, see, that, that cover is fine, but the other one is not. Um, <laughs> is a, kind of been a mainstay of the Vinegar Syndrome forums. Like a lot of people have been asking for this one. And um, it's kind of a thing that they say, you know, it needs to be seen to be believed. And so I wanted to see and then see if I would believe it. Um, the thing that got me is that there's a human basketball in it, which if you've seen a lot of horror movies, you'll know that there's maybe one other reference to that that I can think of that was a Wes Craven movie with Anne Ramsey that I'm drawing a name, uh, a blank on the name right now. But if you know, you know. Uh, this one takes place in uh, some Mayan ruins, and um, there's some uh, Mexicans that are attempting to revive a, a deadly ancient ritual, or attempting to... Yeah, they're trying to revive an ancestor in a ritual. Okay, I should stop reading the plots because I'm dropping the ball on this one. Next up, we have <laughs> Alien Private Eye. Uh, this one is from 1989, directed by Vic Rubenfeld. Uh, again, this is one which I had really not much, uh, didn't know too much about it. And um, I, I think when I used to see it on the video store shelves back in the days, uh, I always confused it with Alien from L.A., which is the Kathy Ireland movie, and it is definitely not the Kathy Ireland movie. Um, and so it it's piqued my interest because, I mean, who doesn't want to see an alien from a faraway planet that works as a private investigator on Earth? Um, I mean, and there's drugs, too. Can't go wrong, right? Um, next up, we have Boggy Creek 2. Um, this is the Six, uh, 1983 sequel, word of, to the 70s a Little Sasquatch movie that could. Um, everybody who knows, or hears the word Boggy Creek knows that that means Sasquatch. Uh, we actually have a film that we're going to be watching for Dollar Store Drive-In that is a Boggy Creek sequel that is not made by the people that were involved in either of these films, but bears the title, kind of like uh, Amityville movies. There's a lot of Amityville. There's a lot of Boggy Creek movies. Um, and I've not seen the first one yet. I don't know if I need to, but I may have to before we watch this. Uh, the basic story is a professor and three of his students camp out in the wilderness and find a Bigfoot-type creature. Pretty simple, right? Yeah. Um, now we've got more uh, Jalal Mehai and Billy Blank's goodness. This one, we've got Expect No Mercy. I mean, come on. You see the back and you're like, okay, I'm in. This is more, uh, it's from 1995, it's more 90s over-the-top action, direct-to-video insanity, directed by Zael Dahlin. Um, again, didn't know too much about this, uh, but I would say it probably requires a late-night viewing with some pizza and a two-liter of your favorite soda. Um, invite over your friends, maybe that's the best way to go, because this one and uh, Talons of the Eagle would make a great double feature. Uh, this one, uh, let's see, a maniacal leader trains assassins to become more efficient killing machines through virtual reality. Okay. I think that uh, is something I saw on the Discovery Channel. 
Now, I love exploitation, as I mentioned. This is the severed arm. Now, you can't get more exploitative, exploitative, is that the right? Then a title like that. This is from 1973, and it's just what it sounds like. It's directed by Tom Alderman, uh, was a drive-in staple at the time, became a home video staple, um, and it's just kind of a crazy concept. Uh, basically, there's five guys trapped in a cave, uh, and in order to ward off starvation, they do something bad to one of the other guys, and after they're saved, their victim seek, seeks revenge on them one by one. So you can see where that's going. 1973 drive-in classic. Um, now this one was one that I had no desire to ever see. I've heard of it once before, knew nothing much about it, but this one is directed by Norman Mailer. Uh, Tough Guys Don't Dance from 1987. It uh, stars Ryan O'Neill in a very un-Ryan O'Neill role. Um, and the, the forums about this one, when I was doing a little research, just went nuts. Like they said, this is a movie that's just so much fun and so crazy that uh, just don't even question it, just buy it. Everybody said that, that there was no bad things that I could see about it. Uh, it's about a writer, an ex-con, and, and a 40-something bottle baby uh, who is prone to blackouts and awakens from a two-week bender to discover a pool of blood in his car. It's kind of a neo-noir kind of thing. It's a little outside of my wheelhouse, but um, it's got Lawrence Tierney in it from uh, Seinfeld and Reservoir Dogs, and he's always a little cuckoo, so I'm excited to check it out and see if it lives up to the hype. Uh, then we've got Dark Tower from 1987, uh, directed by Freddie Francis and Ken Wiederhorn. This one, um, I have a feeling I know exactly how this movie is going to go. I told my wife before we watch it that I'm going to give her a plot breakdown based on what little I know. I have not done any uh, reading here other than that uh, it says a partially under construction office tower is being haunted by a deadly presence, which seems to target the building's architect. That's all I know, um, but just from the pictures... I think it's pretty much you can kind of ascertain what's going to happen. There was a time in the 80s when they were making uh, films, that, horror films that took place in uh, skyscrapers. Uh, I think Shakma or, um, I don't know, I can't think of any off the top of my head. But this one fell into that kind of sub-genre of a sub-genre. Um, I haven't heard a lot of great things about it, but I like the, uh, the FX that I've seen, and it just piqued my interest. Uh, Unmasking the Idol. From 1986, directed by Worth Keeter. Um, this one's mentioned a lot on the Vinegar Syndrome forums. So if you are uh, a fan of Vinegar Syndrome and you are on their forums at all, uh, then you may have heard of this one. All I know from the trailer was that there was a monkey and uh, a bunch of people fighting each other, including the monkey. I think the monkey was fighting people, not the other way around. Um, but I've heard it kind of tops all the other ones that I have in my box so far. Uh, the plot is Duncan Jax is facing his most challenging mission ever to save the world from evil terrorists. Steven Skull, anyone? Except Steven Skull never had a monkey. Blood Delirium. This is from 1988, directed by Sergio Bergonzelli. Uh, as I've said earlier uh, and in other videos, I'm trying to broaden my Italian horror uh, knowledge. My brother-in-law is a big Italian horror film fan. And I've tried on several occasions, but it hasn't spoken to me just yet, but I'm, I think it will eventually. Um, this one has uh, been recommended. It's about an unbalanced painter who uses some blood for painting purposes and some other stuff. It's kind of a long involved plot, but that's the gist of it. Um, and it's got some interesting art here. So I'm, I'm curious to see if it lives up to the hype. Um, let's see here. Cyber Vengeance, Cyber Vengeance, excuse me, from 1995, another uh, video store movie that stars Robert Davi and Debbie Roshan, which if that isn't 1995 in a box, I don't know what is. Um, this is another sci-fi thing that would, you know, kind of involve late nights with your buddies, eating Little Caesar's pizza with a two liter of Coke, uh, in which you can kind of smell that musty basement right now, if you know what I mean, and I think you do. Um, the basic plot here is a one sentence plot that says a high tech entrepreneur allows wealthy sportsmen to hunt inmates in a virtual reality prison. Right? You're with me. I know you are. Uh, okay. Mutant hunt. Who doesn't love a good mutant hunt from 1987 directed by Tim Kincaid. Uh, this is the first of a string of 
kind of crazy direct-to-video genre films from Tim, K Tim Kincaid. Uh, he was a man behind Breeders and Robot Holocaust, which uh, are both films that are on my list to see at some point, but I've not seen them as of yet. Uh, I was part of Charles Brand's Empire Picture, which uh, if you have read any of my recent reviews or seen any of my videos, my wife and I, for my birthday, watched the Empire box set, the all, all five movies in one sitting. I'm currently reading Charles Brand's um, biography right now. Is it biography or autobiography? He wrote it himself, so that would make it an autobiography. Um, and the guy's an interesting, it's an interesting read. You should check it out. Um, but I, I have a feeling this one is going to get a little weird. Uh, Z, a vicious genetic scientist, discovers a way to alter harmless humanoid creatures called cyborgs into becoming killing machines, which he plans to use for his own gain. I think um, I had a doctor like that once. Okay, we've got two more, and then we're done. You can go home. So we've got Fortress of America, which um, is used to be uh, under the trauma label. I love Uncle Lloydy. I've had a conversation with him. I've met him before, um, and I've been eyeballing this one for a long time. And the sale finally got me to pull the trigger um, because, you know, I love trauma. And this one seemed like kind of a no-brainer. Uh, I've heard some very mixed things about it. So I don't know quite what I'm getting into, if it's going to be good or bad. Um, but a rebel leader is planning a revenge against a corrupted sheriff. Meanwhile, in the nearby woods, a crazy general is leading a secret militia called Fortress of America, that with three Ks, uh, who brutally kill anyone trespassing close to their campground. What could go wrong? I'm sure there'll be lots of blood, guns, and guts, and other things. Finally, we are at the finish line. We have Last Gasp. This one, they just can't seem to get rid of. Um, I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign, because some people have said it was really good, and some people said, no bueno. Um, it stars Robert Patrick, who recently has had a resurgence, thanks to things like uh, The Peacemaker Show. Uh, he is an actor that I thought kind of after the Terminator 2 you know, put him into the limelight that it was going to kind of uh, die out, kind of like his brother Richard, who was the man behind the band Filter. Um, but he's back, and he seems to be getting better and better roles. So uh, this one is about a ruthless real estate developer who's possessed by violent spirits of the Native American tribesmen he massacred, uh, which forced him to go on an indiscriminate killing spree against his will. I mean, I'm curious. Um, I don't know what to expect other than I like Robert Patrick. And it's from the 90s, so, you know, that's the big thing right now is, is direct-to-video 90s films are what a lot of boutique labels are, are buying up and putting out there for people like us to check out. So um, if you like this, there will be more videos to come. I'm now a subscriber to Vinegar Syndrome, so every month except for two of the months out of the year will be a video with whatever was released for that month, a little bit of conversation about it, and occasionally other unboxing videos for other stuff that I get. So... If you like this, uh, go check out thenewlydeads.com where you can find our blog, uh, our podcast, our TV show, our other our YouTube channel with all of our other videos, which if you're already watching this, you probably found our YouTube channel at this point, uh, events where we're going to be at, and uh, possibly a store at some point with some things either for free or to buy. Who knows? Things are crazy. Things are happening. Also, go to vinegarsyndrome.com. Check out what they have there. Uh, they're one of my favorite labels. And uh, if you can't tell, uh, they've, they've taken a lot of my money. Um, not, not by force, but anyway. Uh, so until next time, we'll see you soon.